Hi, I'm Dan from Real Mac Software and welcome to this week's Elements Developer Diary. Now, you might notice the recording setup slightly different and that's because I'm on macOS Sequoia and unfortunately some of the software I use has some issues and has not been updated yet so I've had to jiggle things around a little bit and this is the setup we have. But the good news is Rapid Weaver Elements does work on macOS Sequoia. So today I want to show you how that works in macOS Sequoia, which is fine, but really how it works with AI and ChatGPT or how you can use it with those tools, uh, because that's kind of a common question. Now we haven't baked uh, AI or ChatGPT into RapidWeaver yet, because I think there's some interesting things Apple are doing, and I think AI is very young still at the moment, and people are still kind of figuring out how to use it. Um, and there are a lot of tools out there, but we're, so we're not, we're really aiming at getting Rapid Weaver elements finished and for you guys to make it usable before we start doing some of these more advanced features. But in the meantime, you can use ChatGPT and uh, custom components in Rapid Weaver. So I'm going to show you how that works now. So uh, I've got a project open here and it's just a basic website. And I've got a container down here and some grid items. So you can see there, container, grid, and then my grid items. And I'm gonna create a uh, custom component here. So there we are. So there's my HTML one. Uh, the test card here was from before when I was just having a quick test to see if, <laughs> to see if this is how it all works and if this is gonna work. And, um, Seems pretty good, but obviously ChatGPT gives different answers every time. So, you know, this is, we're kind of winging it and we'll see what we see. So I've got my um, custom component here and I can open up the little editor and we can see the HTML for it, which is there, which is great. Now, what we want to do is launch ChatGPT and I use, um, I use ChatGPT, but it's in Raycast because I use Raycast, but this is, the vanilla chat GPT, you know, um, there we are. It says down there 4.0. So in here we can ask it for Tailwind code. So um, let's say I want uh, create, create a card with Tailwind because I want one of those classic cards in here. And it's gonna type that out. Um, if you're familiar with a bit of HTML, this should be doable for you. So I know it looks like a lot of code there. And it's given us all the HTML and headers and we don't want that. So I say um, just the Tailwind code. And this will make it a bit cleaner for us and we can just copy, um, copy this section here. All right, uh, now I see this result is certainly different from from the result I had earlier when I was doing this quick test. I can see that already, but let's see what it gives us. So um, yes, I've just copied this code in here and I'll go into our uh, template for our uh, little HTML component there. And if we just paste this in, you can see it's uh, created the card for us and it's looking pretty good. It's got a little drop shadow on there, some text and a button. The, um, it's obviously missing an image. Uh, for some reason, that is the link to Unsplash is not working, but that's fine because we want to do a custom image here anyway. So, you know, this is great that this is working and I can, um, and I can come in here and I can obviously, uh, oh, why isn't that updating there? That should be updating. Uh, let's have a look. That is the problem with beta software there, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Card content, my new card. Ah, uh, oh, there we are. Okay. All right, now it's updating. Uh, not sure what went on there. You know, this is, uh, this is alpha software. What are you gonna do? All right, so, um, the nice thing here, because we are using um, Tailwind and we have all the 
styles already set up. You can see this button down here is it's already using the blue color. And if I open the theme studio, we already have blue set up in here. And I can duplicate that and then I could change the code. And you can see the code that we've just copied and pasted in from ChatGPT is already working and we can just change the color of it, which is phenomenal really. That's just, the way that works is so great. And that's the same with the spacing and the shadows and the fonts and things like that. But we want to take this further. We want to make this actually usable and we want to get an image in here. So um, what we can do is we can add some properties to our custom component and um, make it easily editable. So I've saved some little snippets here rather than me retyping everything out. And I've got this little snippet here, which is going to give us, uh, oh, let's close that. Oh. That's Nova misbehaving now, because again, it's on uh, Sequoia. There's lots of bugs all over the place. Uh, this, so this is um, a little snippet of uh, UI code for us to generate a little drop well in here so we can change this image. And what we need to do is we need to, in our custom component, we need to paste this into the properties area because this generates the UI for us. So now our, um, custom component here, our HTML custom component, now has this nice little UI for images. And here the title is image and I, you know, I could change this to card image and you can see as I type, it updates in the UI here. And the ID uh, here, this is um, so we can refer to it in the template. It's called banner image. Let's change this to card image. And um, let me copy this. What we want to do, we want to replace this image that isn't linking to anywhere, it doesn't work anyway. We want to get rid of that and we want to put in um, open curly braces. Now you'll see this has gone black and this is giving us an error here because our syntax is invalid. And that's because I haven't finished typing and now if I close that, we're now saying use the card image that is in here. Um, and there's obviously no image in there yet, so it's empty. So let's go and fix that. And I've got some images here. Uh, these are some nice pictures of some um, birds my daughter took uh, just last week. So there we go. So I can drop that in. And now you can see we're using, uh, it's using the properties there. And it's just using that image, which is very, very cool. Now, uh, let me go back here. Now, we obviously can edit the HTML here to, to change, um, to, up, to update the text, but we can't edit it in the page and that would be nice. So we're going to fix that as well. So what we want, let me go and get another uh, snippet. So this at text here, this allows us to edit the text in the page. And if I just uh, paste this in here, You'll see that switch to card title and let's get the other one here. Um, and we want to replace this text. So you'll see at text and we've called this one subtext at text heading and this is to give them custom values. So elements knows they're different. So now um, I can actually edit the um, the text in here. This is a description of the bird. There we are. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. And let's see now. So we've got this button down here, which is great, um, but I don't want, um, we, could, we could add controls for this. We could add controls. Let me just show you that um, because we could, um, Oh yeah, that's really what we want to do. This, so we could add controls here. I could add some text boxes and things, and that could update the the text on this button and the link and things. But that uh, I don't really want to do that. What would be more flexible is if we put if we put a little drop zone in there. So now this at drop zone will allow us to drop any other component in here, which is which is really powerful. Um, 
so you can see at text gives you text editable text in here and at drop zone gives you editable drop zones and we want a button in there so now I've dropped this in um, you can see uh, I get I get a full um, a full uh, set of controls for this for this button so we can do we can do anything we like there you know it's the, the standard button that I'm using throughout the site and it's all matched up and sees that and I could I could put anything in it else in there you know uh, let me just get rid of that and I could drop some paragraph text in there you know or um, I could drop a grid in there and you could you could build up things this way so it's really flexible but let's drop a button back in there now so this is looking pretty good because what I wanted to do I wanted to have multiple cards about all these different birds for example you I might want to do that um, which is great so I've created this custom HTML element um, let me just let's rename this call this bird card and you'll see it's updated in there so which is good so now when I drop it in here um, I just need to give it an image but the problem the problem here give it another image the problem here um, is my custom drop zone I'm missing this uh, button that I want so perhaps here we don't really want to keep using the bird card because I actually want the button there so what we can do I will delete that what we can do we can turn the bird card into a global so I right click on it say convert to global and now our little bird cards here and the little it's now outlined with green you'll know if I drop this one in you'll see it's blue and a global is outlined with green so let's get rid of that and because I'm using the global of this it's given us the uh, button here and we can override the the settings yeah so you'll see it's a complete copy like all the text is a copy and all the images are copy and all we need to do is uh, override the um, the image and then I can drop in a custom image and um, these things we've set up we can also override the text for each of these so we don't need we don't need to edit these anymore we can say override the text um, and we say this is another bird uh, this is another description of another bird so now they're now they're different and I can obviously do the same here I can break the link and um, I can overwrite you know I can override the text here uh, so yeah so this is really flexible so let's drop on another one and so those overrides I, I've got I can still do a copy of this those overrides will keep this the same but if I change this one you can see it changes um, all of those and if I change the color it will change the color on all of them because I didn't break the link if I go back to this one and say actually I want this to be a unique one let's break the link on the color and I can change it here and we'll make that one green but now when I come back to here these two that are that haven't been overridden actually stay in sync um, so creating these little custom elements like this let's just uh, let me that's bugging me there I just want to do a little bit of space to line them up um, yeah so this the way of creating these custom components and then turning them into globals is really really powerful so it gives you all the flexibility you need to do these you know if if we if we don't have these things built in you can easily get chat GPT to build you a little card and you can paste it into here override a few things and now I've created my own custom components and I can use these as much as I like you know um, which is which is really 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 powerful let me just change this image here so the possibilities of what you can do with this stuff are are endless you know this is just one small simple example and I've got these cards here that are written in Tailwind that just work with my site um, you know and I 
don't necessarily, you know, you could imagine I don't know anything about code really, but I've asked ChatGPT, Chat GPT, and it's given me that, and um, and I've managed to do this myself. You know, as a user, that is really, really powerful, um, and especially when it comes to other users creating components and sharing them, this will add up uh, to so many possibilities for users, and allow them to build the sites they want really easily. So that was a quick look at how you could use Chat GPT with custom components, and then using the powerful global feature we've created and how flexible it is to kind of build these things the way you want. So that's um, that's what we're really focused in and it's really exciting to be able to do this because I don't, I really don't feel like other tools are this easy or this powerful to do this kind of stuff in and, and it really, we're really trying to put the power into users hands so they can go as deep as they want on this stuff. So all right, um, that's it for this week. Hope you like the video. Do ask questions in the forum as always and we'll do our best to answer them. So uh, I will be back next week on the regular schedule of Tuesday and I will see you then. All right, thanks for watching this. Cheers, bye.